Hi, second grade. Hope you're ready for another fun math lesson today. Um, our objective today is that we can and we will identify unknown numbers on a number line by using the distance between numbers and points. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at number lines and they're going to have some parts of that that we don't know. We're going to have to look at the numbers that we do know to figure out those other points. And don't worry, we're going to go through this all together. Um, if you'd like to follow along with the paper and pencil, grab that today to draw your own number lines. Otherwise, just make sure you're watching really carefully, paying extra attention so you're able to do this on your own after. So before we get started, we have to talk about um, some vocabulary that you guys are going to hear today during this lesson and see. The first one is number line. A number line is a line with equally spaced units to represent number values. So if you look at these lines, these spaces, these hash marks are equally spaced. That means the distance between them is equal. So each distance is an equal length. It means it's the same. This is the same as this, as this, and as this. So those are called equal lengths. These little lines here can be called units. We also are going to hear them called hash marks. So you might see either one of those as um, used in this lesson, unit or hash mark. I know on your problem set today, it asks you, um, it tells you about a hash mark. So make sure you know a unit and a hash mark. The number that's connected to those units or hash marks, how much it's worth, is called its value. And these parts at the end of the number line, so where we have a 30 and a 50 for a value, are called endpoints. So if we talk about the endpoints, just go pay attention to the end of the number line. We are also going to be asked to find the difference today. The difference is the length between two points. So a question might say, find the difference between point A and point B. So we want to figure out how much is in between those. And the quickest way to do that is a subtraction problem. So 50 minus 30. You can also count forward to figure that out. So if we know the value between each like, uh, hash mark is 5, we can count up by 5s to figure out how much is in between. So the first way is subtraction. 50 minus 30 is 20. The second way is counting up. So if I start at 30, I'm going to count up by 5s until I get to 50. 30. Now I'm going to go count by just by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20. So there was 20 centimeters in between 30 and 50. So either way works. I'll be showing the subtraction way just like I did right here. Um, and then I'll just be practicing using the counting up way to check my work. You can do both ways. Um, if you get the same answer, you know your work is correct. So let's practice. So how many units or hash marks are on this number line? That's really easy, we can just count those units. Let's do it together. Put your finger at the first one. One, two, three. There are three units on this number line. Now, how do we find the value of each unit? When we have unknown values, where there isn't a number here, we have to look at the values we do know to figure out how much those unknown values are worth. Remember that the space between each hash mark is equal. So I know that this is the same as this. So today we're going to be practicing focusing on fives and tens. It could be more, but most of our um, equal lengths today are fives and tens. So first I'm going to try fives. If I jump by fives, will I get to 50? If I have two fives here, 30, 35, 40. No. So I, if it was fives, it would be 40. And this is 50, so that's wrong. So let's try tens. 30, 40, 50. Yeah, so if I did that and I got the right number at the end, this must be jumping by tens. So the value between each point or the length between each hash mark is 10. Once we figure that out, we can plug it into our number line. I put it in a 40 right here. So 30, 40, 50. Kind of like a puzzle. You have to try different number values to see if you get to the right number at the end. You might also sometimes have to go backwards on these problems to figure out the unknown values. 
So now let's practice. This is what your work is going to look like today. You're going to have two types of problems, but we're going to practice two of each so you're ready to do them on your own. The first type of problem you have looks like this. You have a number line. You, it has hash marks. You have some values that they give you and some that are unknown. You have to figure out the length between each hash mark. And when you do that, you'll have to figure out the length for these unknown values that are labeled. So our problem reads, each unit has a length of blank centimeters. So each unit, how much is each one going to be? How much are we going forward by or backwards by? And then A equals, so A is right here, so we have to tell you what is A. Once we figure out the value of each unit, then we can figure out what A is pretty easily. So our tips are, try skip counting by tens or fives. So the first one, I'm gonna try tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So I got to 70 here, but this says 40. So tens is not the value of each unit. So I'm not gonna use tens here. Let's try fives. This is a 10, so I'm gonna count up by fives now. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. That's correct. So the value of each unit is five. Now I can fill in my number line. I'm gonna go back again and count by fives. 10, 15, 20, 25. So A, the value of A equals 25 centimeters. And each unit has a length of five because we're jumping forward by fives. So it's as simple as that. Today, remember to use try using tens and fives. If you get really good at this, you might be having to use larger values um, in between each one, but most of ours today will be either jumping by tens or fives. Let's do another one so you really get used to it. Okay, this one says each unit has a length of blank centimeters and C equals. The thing that's different about this one is C is backwards. It's behind our first value that we know. So what we're going to do is we're going to try skip counting by five, tens and fives just like we were from 210 to 240 to see what it is. But once we figure that out, we're going to have to start at 210 and subtract that amount to figure out what C is. All right. So like I said, we're going to try skip counting by tens or fives. I always start with tens first because they're a little bit easier. 210 plus 10 more is 220 plus 10 more is 230 plus 10 more is 240. So my values match. So we were jumping by tens. Awesome. So I know that the value or the length between each hash mark is 10 centimeters. But now I need to go backwards. I know that this one is 210. I'm not going to go forward 10 to figure out what C is. I need to go backwards 10. So I'm going to do 210 minus 10 to figure out what C is. And I get 200. Each unit has a length of 10 centimeters, so the length between each unit is 10, and C equals 200. I can check my work by starting at 200 and counting and jumping up 10 to see if it matches. 200 plus 10 is 210. Awesome. So this works. So the beginning of your work today is going to be problems just like that. You're going to be determining what the value between each hash mark is. So how long is that equal length? It's usually fives or tens. Then you're going to be using what you know to figure out the value for a hash mark. So I didn't know what C was, but I was able to figure that out once I knew how long the distance between two hash marks was. The second type of problem you're going to have is a little bit different. They look like this. Each hash mark represents five or more on the number line. So they tell you it's going to be five or more. You can decide whether you want to jump by fives or tens. Then you'll have to label all your hash marks and find the difference between them. So find how much length is between each hash mark. So let's practice. I'm just going to use fives because it says I can use five or more. So this first one, I'm just going to jump by fives. So I'm going to label each hash mark on my number line. 400, I'm going to go up 405. Here we go. 400 plus 5 is 405. 405 plus 5, plus 5 more is 410. 
plus 5 more is 415, plus 5 more is 420. So I was able to add fives and label my number line. Then I have to figure out the difference between D and E. So I know that D was 410 and I know that E was 420. Remember, to find the difference, we have to use subtraction. It's the length between two points. Or we can start at one number and count up if we know the value of each, of the length between each hash mark. So let's do both ways. So D was 410 and E was 420. When I subtract, I always start with the larger number. So I'm going to say 420 minus 410 equals 10. The difference is 10. Now I'm going to check that by counting up by fives. I know the value between each hash mark is five. So I'm just going to start here and count up by fives to see if I get 10. Five, 10. Yeah, so the difference between D and E was 10. All right, we're going to do one more before it's your turn to uh, practice on your own. Each hash mark represents 10 or more on the number line. So I will not be jumping by fives. I can jump by tens. If you want to jump by fifties, you can, hundreds. It's up to you. It just has to be more than 10. I'm going to show you guys one where I jump by tens. Something different here is that we don't start with a number. We end with a number. So just like our second problem that we practiced earlier, we're going to have to go backwards. So I'm thinking about what is 115 minus 10. That's going to be 105. And then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to take away 10 each time. So I start in the back. We're subtracting 10. 115 minus 10 is 105. 105 minus 10 is 95. And I'm going to keep going backwards by 10s. 95, 85, 75, 65, 55. Now I was able to label my whole number line. And if I now started at 55, I can jump forward by 10s to check my work. 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105, 115. So the equal length between each hash mark is 10. So now I have to find the difference between my two endpoints. Remember the endpoints are where the number line ends and where it starts. So I figured out that F was 55 when I was jumping backwards by 10s. So I need to use my subtraction problem. My one endpoint is 115, the other is 55. So 115 minus 55 equals 60. So the difference is 60. I'm going to check my work by just counting how, what the value, uh, adding tens for each one to see what the value is. I should get 60 if I did this correctly. So I'm just going to count by tens now, starting at zero to see what that value is. 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. We did it. So you're going to do exactly what we just practiced. So if you need help, go back and watch this video again. You can watch it as many times as you want. If you only want help with the second part type of problem, only watch the second half of the video. Make sure to pause and think about stuff in between too. Don't just watch through as fast as you can. This is to help you learn. It's not just to do it because I want you to do some work. So make sure that you're really taking the time to learn how to do this and have fun. Your problem set looks very similar to the work we did today, so I know you'll do a great job.